Horizon just wants to react on this is Is the US really preparing for World War 3 by channel Sandbox? Another Sandbox video and it's like it's, the recent video has been like uh, in this direction I guess uh, Obviously Russia thing uh, how you know like can F-16 do that can, you know F-35 landed near Russia and is US I don't know man US has been preparing for China uh, not for you know Taiwan defense let's just say they're you know uh, marine division every, they've been changing that a lot i've been watching a lot of videos like that task and purpose real life lore you know sandbox so yeah it feels like they've been preparing for all that but world war three last last time uh you know i watched one of the videos it is you know basically said like us doesn't have the fund to actually do the war right and it's like barely any country has the fund to actually do the war so what does it even mean to prepare for world war three if you don't have fun to do even war against one country, how do you prepare for the whole world war? So I don't know uh, how they're going to prepare for World War Three, Because aren't the U.S. been preparing for World War for past 70, 80 years or whatever? That's what basically Cold War was. Trying to prevent that. Basically since then, they've been like making different type of weapons, equipment, just in case type of thing. So I don't know. But it's going to be interesting. Let's do it. Remember, if you like my reaction, don't forget to subscribe so that way I know which type of videos to react to more. If you want to do any specific reaction, comment down. If you haven't seen other reactions like this, I did. Check out the link in the description or in the end of the video end card. And let's watch it. As I speak, the United States has at least three new stealth aircraft in active development, a new nuclear intercontinental ballistic missile, new classes of nuclear gravity bombs being integrated into stealth aircraft. Wait a minute, what three? I mean, obviously B-52, the replacement of B-2, right? Uh, the next generation of air dominance, which is the third one? Already have F-35, F-22. Like the F-35, a new class of nuclear ballistic missile submarines larger than any the U.S. has ever fielded before, and a whole lot more. And that's prompted several people to ask on this platform and others if the U.S. is preparing for a global conflict in the not-too-distant future. And the simple answer is yes. But the more complicated answer is that the U.S. is hoping that preparation itself is what prevents that next large-scale conflict from actually erupting. And the word we use for this is deterrence. Now, the basic premise behind deterrence, as I've said on this channel before, is to present such a capable military footing to your adversaries that they think twice about engaging you in direct conflict. Yeah, I mean, that's been the U.S.'s MO uh, for, like, since World War II, right? Deterrence. Uh, creating such a powerful equipment that other basically st stays away. In recent time, like America has been really like, you know, moving forward and forward, leaving everyone behind. China is the one slowly catching up, but like catching up by how, how much margin and what factor. The US is kind of like flying ahead that way. But yeah, when it comes to deterrence, all I'm going to say is that uh, when somebody like really t test you, right? You need to show something in a response just to show you're not just like, uh, just flex and do nothing, right? Even if you have like power, you're not going to do anything about it. Because if you do that, like people know like all the equipment, all the weapons, you're probably not going to get involved unless somebody directly attacks US, right? So if that's the case, like slowly it will erupt to something. But when the, you know, when like certain borders are crossed and you really show your force, like I told you not to cross that border. Then people are actually like, okay, let's not fuck around, type of way. And this has really been the primary role of the U.S. military for better than a half century now, as the United States has found itself in several small regional conflicts, some that spanned for decades, but there hasn't been a large-scale conflict between global powers since the end of World War II, in large part because of this deterrent strategy. But many of the platforms, weapons, and systems the United States relied on to maintain this deterrent posture all throughout the Cold War are still in service today and are aging out of relevance. And the truth is, throughout some 20 years of the global war on terror, the U.S. just kept kicking those cans down the road because near-peer conflict was not their primary concern. All throughout the 90s and 2000s, the United States was really the only power on the global stage. 
But in 2012, China's Xi Jinping took power, and since then he has revolutionized the Chinese military with the specific goal of being able to fight and beat the United States. And that is a big part of why you've seen a resurgence in focus in advanced defense technologies within the United States. And this sort of military buildup in hopes of cultivating peace is not without precedent. In fact, we can look back to DARPA's Cold War assault breaker concept as an excellent example. You see, throughout a good portion of the Cold War, NATO was well aware of the fact that Europe was straight up outmatched by Soviet and Warsaw Pact nations, armor and troops sitting right on their border. Knowing full well that a full-scale Soviet invasion of Europe would likely continue unabated until reinforcements could be marshaled and sent in on a counteroffensive. And these very real concerns led to DARPA's assault breaker concept, which was a reconnaissance and strike complex meant to engage the second wave of Soviet equipment pouring into Europe, effectively cutting off that first attacking wave from any logistical support and making it possible to surround and overrun them. Now, this was no small undertaking, but it was also greatly successful, and by 1977, the chief of the Soviet Red Army General Staff even said publicly that this new assault breaker concept undermined Soviet warfighting doctrine and plans, effectively eliminating Soviet confidence that such an assault would be successful. And that is what deterrence is all about. You see, deterring conflict with an aggressive state like Russia or China yeah, that is so interesting. So when it comes to China, obviously China is growing power against U.S. That's why they're making the sixth generation one tuned to Pacific, I think. So they can actually like fight in the environment basically for the Taiwan conflict or anything like that, right? Or any conflict that might happen with China because China is the one who's like closing in. But I didn't know it was Soviet time, like that was the scenario, right? But then again, I didn't used to think about the logistics of war. Right? I'm like, oh, America's powerful. Like, why would Soviet Union attack Europe? But yeah, America's not in Europe, right? Like, reinforcement take time. Like, it's a logistical nightmare. So, yeah, deterrence like that is, like, instrumental. Uh, I don't know what, what are they cooking right now in Pentagon and shit. But yeah, they must be thinking about, well, like, if Taiwan thing happened, what deterrence to create so that doesn't happen. Like, what to do in Europe or something so things don't escalate. Nations that have demonstrated their general disinterest in adhering to international norms or even international laws can't be done through diplomacy alone. And if these nations see you as standing between them and their overarching strategic objectives and perceive you as too weak to stop them from achieving those objectives, they will go right through you in order to get there. So to deter such a conflict, you need to defeat your oppositions theory of victory. In other words, the plan they have that they think they can use to steamroll through you. If you can demonstrate your ability and, importantly, your capacity to stop that strategy from being successful, you will stop them from enacting that strategy. Ultimately, warfare is often a game of numbers, as we've seen with Russia's invasion of Ukraine turning into a fight of attrition. But if you can see beforehand that that math may not play out in your benefit, well, you're less likely to take that offensive action and more likely to look for alternatives. And that is the whole idea behind American deterrent military strategy and these efforts to field high-end exquisite weapon systems that may ultimately never actually see a fight. Platforms like the F-22 Raptor that some call a failure because it's never had to shoot an enemy aircraft down, but in reality is a resounding success because every time it could have shot an enemy aircraft down, that enemy aircraft ran away. That is so insane. By the way, this gun is not that good because it didn't shoot anyone. By the way, it's still deadly. It's a 50 caliber a round. It's a Desert Eagle. It's never shoot, shot anyway, so it's useless. But yeah, what are you talking about? It's a gun. F-22's failure just because it didn't see combat? Come on. It's after, t on test, on like simulations and all like anything besides uh, actual combat. It's badass. So in an actual combat, it would be badass. You should be happy that it has it didn't see the, you know, like, war and shit. And it makes sense, this kind of mentality. Like, uh, creating and making all this shit so war doesn't happen. I mean, you know, that's just best of all worlds, right? I mean, you need to make this weapon as a deterrent. 
right and at the same time you don't have to like spend a budget in war because war is not happening uh but yeah but at the same time other people basically come around and say like you spend all this money in war you know like this kind of military equipment you could have used you could we could have used that to do some other shit like that was a wasted money have you thought about deterrent like because you spend this much money in uh in military equipment that was no war so uh, past 10 or 15 or 20 years i've been seeing that a lot in like uh in, in america people have been like questioning oh, america spending way too much money in defense if you spend this here and there okay but it's a deterrence man right i mean uh, after world war ii like this russia thing is the biggest conflict right there have been like smaller conflict but not with the bigger nations why do you think that is so it makes sense i don't know what deterrence they're working at but yeah uh it would be really interesting to see like what what they're working it to like uh, deter china from attacking taiwan because deterring China would be like a next challenge, big challenge, right? Because China is just flexing, they're like spearheading through, right? Their GDP is just increasing, their military power is increasing. So how are they going to deter that? That's going to be interesting to see. All right, well, uh, if you like my next video, subscribe and I'll see you next time.